Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about the pH scale. Now I chose this picture here because all of the items on the table in front of the lady have either acidic, basic, or neutral properties, and the pH scale is all about whether something is acidic, neutral, or basic. So we have two learning goals for today, to identify the properties of acids and bases and to describe the pH scale. So let's compare our acids and bases. First of all, what are they? Well, acids release H plus ions. H plus ions are sometimes also referred to as protons. So they release protons when they're in water. They, if we're looking at the formula, it always starts with an H and it ends with a subscript AQ. And so here are a couple examples of the uh, formulas that we would see for acids. Bases, on the other hand, accept protons when they're in water. So the acids release protons and bases take them. When we're looking at the formula, they end with either OH or CO3, and they also end with the subscript AQ. So here are a couple examples of what we would see for formulas for bases. Let's look at some of the properties now. Acids, at least these would be the ones that we're able to eat, not all the chemicals in the lab we want to eat, but some of the things that are uh, acidic at home that we might have, different types of food. Acids taste sour and bases taste bitter. Acids have a pH below 7, so this is one of the definitions when we talk about pH acid is below 7 and the base is above 7. Acids and bases both conduct electricity. Acids turn litmus paper red. So litmus paper is a special type of paper that helps you determine if a substance is an acid or a base. And if you dip it into an acid, the color will turn red. If you dip it into a base, the color will turn blue. A good way to remember the difference between which one turns which color, base starts with B and blue starts with B, so a base turns litmus paper blue. And acids react with metals to produce hydrogen gas, so that's an interesting characteristic about them. And bases are very slippery, which is also an interesting characteristic about them. So let's take a look at how acids worked. We said that acids work by releasing protons into water. So it splits into the H plus cation and then whatever the anion happens to be for that acid. So here's an example, HCl, that would be an acid and it would split into the proton and the Cl anion. So if we dunk this into water, we're going to have our proton and our anion separate and then they're releasing that proton into water because it's no longer attached to, as an HCl combined together. It's separated so that the proton is all floating around by itself. Let's take a look at another example. This is a different type of acid called an oxoacid. So it's also got some oxygen in there as well as a non-metal as well as the hydrogen. So here we're going to see something very similar. If we dunk this into water, then the protons, the two protons in this case, are going to separate away from the anion and now you've released protons into water. Now let's take a look at how the bases work. Bases accept protons in towards them. So normally what happens, you might have a substance that's already acidic or you might have a substance that's neutral like plain water, but in water there's always some protons floating around. So H2O sometimes splits up into an H proton into an OH negative anion. So sometimes they separate out like that. So you're always going to have protons floating around and these bases will suck up those protons and attach them to themselves. So this is how it would work. It would split into the cation and then depending on which anion you're dealing with, which base you're dealing with, either the OH, the CO3 or the HCO3 will be the anion and then that anion will pull in the uh, proton. So here's an example, NaOH is a uh, really common base and you can see in the water we've got some protons already. If we dunk the NaOH into the water, this will separate into the cation and anion and now the OH can pull in one of the protons towards itself. So it's accepted one of the protons and removed it from water and it itself has actually turned into a water molecule. 
So let's take a look now at how we would measure acids and bases. We said that acids produce protons or H plus ions, so that means they're adding protons to water. Bases accept protons, which means they're removing them from water. So how could we measure whether something's acidic or basic? Well, we just measure how many protons or what the concentration of protons is in that substance. And that's actually what the pH scale is all about. It measures the concentration of protons in the substance. So let's take a look at the formula for pH. This is a little bit above and beyond what you need to know for this course. However, you will see this again if you take grade 11 or grade 12 chemistry. So this is the formula for pH. Now we'll notice here in square brackets, and then it says H+. Plus. Square brackets indicate concentration, and we know H plus is the proton, so this is talking about the concentration of protons. You'll then notice that it starts with a negative sign. This sort of indicates the opposite of what we're thinking. So acids have lots of protons, but they have a low pH. And bases have very few protons, but they have a high pH. So that negative sign kind of tells us it's the opposite of what we're expecting. And then the logarithm that we have here indicates that we're dealing with orders of magnitude. So the difference on a pH scale between 1 and 2 is actually 10 and the difference between 1 and 3 is actually a hundred and the difference between 1 and 4 is a thousand and so on so we're dealing with orders of magnitude so if we take a look at our pH scale it goes from 1 to 14 everything from 1 to 6 is an acid and the lower the number the more acidic and everything from 8 to 14 is a base the higher the number the more basic and 7 is a neutral substance so let's talk about how we would measure pH. There are a few different ways. The first is the litmus paper that we talked about earlier. It turns red in acids and blue in bases. There are also pH strips that work similar to litmus paper, only they have more different colors that, can it, it, that it can turn, and those different colors specify more specific pHs rather than just acid or base. Um, you can also add liquid indicators that turn various different colors at certain pHs. And then you can use a pH meter, which gives you a very specific pH, usually to one or two decimal points. So we have a couple learning goals here to identify the properties of acids and bases and to describe the pH scale. If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye bye.